Our fellow flying creatures are laboring away maintaining their little homes and pooping on our deck. Despite that fact, we appreciate and feel kinship towards these busy little birds that seem to assemble around our vessel. Where Choco chases away the neighborhood cats and raccoons that would otherwise climb the trees and ruin their work. In the sky, on the land, or in the water, we're all just immersed in preserving our home. But meanwhile, something has been smoldering in the background. The wreck of the Topazia, which you may have seen in our last video, was plopped down right next to our own boat in Esperado, awaiting a haul out. This is what our anchor looks like after lending it to the task of trying to pull Topazia off the beach. Somehow it ended up under the keel of the vessel when the leading ropes chafed through and the boat dragged backwards. Topazia is in line for a haul out as other boats are undergoing work on the hard. The lovely named Angelita just underwent a major facelift. And next, another vessel, a no day 34, also getting a paint job. As we pondered bottom jobs and beautification, one of our main necessities of life decided to self-destruct again. This side of the tear feels pretty, still pretty strong. This side just coming out. About one year ago, we removed the leaky metal tanks and shipped in a new plastic flexible one instead. To keep it cozy, safe, and unpunctured, we built an entire wood and fiberglass box. But despite the protective container, we had trouble with the connections from the start. Plastic is cooked or something. Now the flexible tank decided to rip itself open. So we were back to square one. A jury-rigged system of a dock hose and or a small bottle tank. Luckily, the only thing our fiberglass box was missing before becoming a true water tank were some proper through hauls and a boatload more of fiberglass and epoxy. I would really need to prep the area as well. Sanding lightly and cleaning with acetone to ready the surfaces for filleting with thickened epoxy and then laying down strips of cloth to ensure that the entire structure is bonded well to the hull. I laid down three layers here, and Robbie would add another thicker strip later on. Of course, laying down fillets and fiberglass on the outside of the tank is all very straightforward, and as pleasant as can be. But what about getting the inside properly epoxied and glassed? Although we built the top of the tank with large enough inspection ports to reach inside corners and crevices, getting inside and working from within was going to be the only way to ensure a smooth and meticulous job. In and out, mixing small batches, and settling into some boat yoga poses.
all that was left to do was to install the windows or inspection holes. Our kind neighbor brought us some of his scrap plexiglass, as there isn't much of that kind of material around these parts, of course. And I hacked these leftover odds and ends into somewhat windows that would cover the holes, more or less. The day came to move poor Topazia to her final resting place. But not without one final ordeal. All the jerry cans and containers, keeping her somewhat afloat, looked bad of course, but I had no idea the extent of the damage on her bottom from losing the keel. She had been eviscerated. she would be taken to the junkyard and sold for parts. Meanwhile, we were getting into the final stages of sorting out our own boat guts. So we screw down the plexiglass temporarily after making the first holes. Then we have our, and I'm improperly calling these helicoils, but essentially they're making a thread inside of our wood material so that we can unscrew and screw back in again and again without shredding up a thread. And so we also then got some screws, some stainless screws to go inside those threads. Robbie tested out the difference between screwing straight into the wood versus using these locking threads. And then you can yank the hole you want, and it's not gonna come out. <laughs> it's not gonna come out. To screw this all down, we would need to be very careful about lining up the lids. So we started by drilling preliminary small holes, screwing down the lid in two opposite corners, just enough to hold it all in place. and then going for a second round to widen the holes in the wood in preparation for the stainless threads. But before installing those nifty little locking mechanisms, we want to make sure to seal the whole deal with epoxy. We don't want any water coming into contact with bare wood. The locking threads have flat head screwdriver grooves on them to be installed, but we found that inserting them into the wood with the screws and the washers themselves helped to make sure that the final position was perfectly flush with the top of the tank. And then because I taped the bottom side to catch some of that leftover epoxy and help stop the wood from splintering, I would need to get into the tank one last time to clean it all up. we would not be painting the entire outside of the tank with white pigmented epoxy just yet because we will be remaking the cabin sole and doing more fiberglass work around the tank eventually. But for now, we wanted to make sure that the area was set for sealing. I would recommend using a little less sealant or using some sort of soft rubber material as a gasket. But in this case, we are simply not going to have a leak from these lids. <laughs> 